Hey, what's going on everybody? It's Joseph from ScreenBite, and a few years ago I talked about the lenses that I like to use on my Micro Four Thirds cameras, like my GH5 or the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema camera that I ordered. And I talked about a specific series of lenses that I love the most, and those are from a company called Voigtlander, and it's their Nocton series. They're all f.95, and they're all just very manual, just full-on gorgeous lenses. And in that video, I talked about how I was using the Panasonic 25mm as my 25mm lens because I hadn't completed the set. Well, today that changes. Let's check it out. All right, so starting things off with a physical overview of the lens. Uh, first things first, uh, this is probably gonna scare a lot of you people off, but this is a all manual lens. So keep that in mind. What does that mean? Well, if you pull off the back, there's no electronic contacts, uh, which means things like adjusting aperture or autofocus are not going to be possible with this lens. Uh, if you rely on those in your day-to-day -day filmmaking, I would honestly recommend looking elsewhere. Uh, however, if you're okay with manually focusing, Focusing, uh, you're gonna get a really good piece of kit here. Um, first things first, this is all metal and very dense, very heavy. So uh, I'm, I haven't tried dropping it, but I would be okay with a drop or two with this lens and be, feel like it's not going to shatter or break. Uh, the focus and aperture rings are absolutely amazing. Let's go ahead and start with the focus ring here. You see that? That's about 200 to 220 degrees of rotation, uh, which is amazing when it comes to pulling focus. And that's gonna be important because this lens stops all the way down to 0.95. Uh, and with if history shows, which you guys will see in a moment with the footage as well as with my past lenses, if you stop this all the way down, it is a sliver of focusing. So it's gonna be very, very difficult uh, to focus at that aperture. So make sure that you have like something like focus peaking on your camera. Um, speaking of that aperture ring, let's go ahead and take a listen. Oh yeah. So one thing I really love about the Voigtlander lenses uh, is that aperture ring. It clicks, are, the clicks are so defined and just so mechanical. It's really, really, really cool. I know it's so dumb to like, go like goggle over, but if you ever, if you ever try one of these, it's like, ah, it's awesome. Now this is the Mark I version of this lens, not the Mark II. Uh, so what that means is that this is going to be using the older aperture ring. If we pull in the 42.5 here, uh, which look at that, they're pretty much the exact same size. It's awesome. You'll notice that there's this little clutch. Uh, that is to affect the, focus, the aperture ring. So if you, and by default, where do I have it set? I have it declicked. If you, set, if you twist this, uh, you can switch between declicking your aperture and clicking your aperture, which is really good for cinematographers because you do not want to have those hard stops if you have to change aperture mid shot. Like for example, going in from like a, a really dimly lit indoor scene to a brightly lit outdoor scene in one take. You can't have the clicks happening during that, which is why I do like the declicked aperture. Unfortunately, I made a mistake when purchasing it and I got the Mark I, but I don't really do aperture changes that often, so it shouldn't affect me too much. But that out of the way, uh, the aperture ring on this is very nice. Let's take a look at the lens elements here. Matter of fact, I'll even show you it all the way, all the way open because this is nuts. So, let's see if we can get that focus for you guys. Come on, Panasonic, you can do it. Yeah. So that's all the way closed. That's open. It's huge. The aperture is huge. Speaking of aperture, this one has 11 elements, which means you're going to get some very nice circular bokeh in your out of focus areas of your image. Uh, but yeah, what do you say we go ahead and throw this on the camera and see what kind of shots we can get from it? Let's start things off with a lens sharpness test. So this is with the lens wide open f.95. And this is where one of the flaws of this lens shows. 
wide open, it's very, very soft. I mean, it's soft in the center and it's soft on the edges and it has this kind of halo effect. You really can't shoot with this lens wide open unless you're going for a very, very specific look. The moment you stop it down to f1.4 though, that changes. The sharpness suddenly appears. It's kind of nutty. Uh, this is where this lens really shines and this is technically what I would consider wide open. Uh, center sharpness is very sharp, but not so sharp that it looks very video-y. It has a cinematic quality to it. Uh, sharpness does fall off a little bit on the edges though. And if we stop the lens down even further, f2.8, you can really see the sharpness coming in on the edges and it's even sharper in the middle, but once again, not being so sharp that it looks very digital or very video-y. Uh, this lens and these Voigtlander lenses in general, I feel have a very cinematic quality to them and it's great if that's what you're looking for. Next up, let's do a little bit of a flare test. So this lens has two different types of flares, uh, one wide open and one when you stop it down. Uh, so when it's wide open, I kind of like the way it flares. It has a very nice halo effect and the flare is very, is very undefined. Uh, if you stop in though, as you can see, that halo disappears and the individual LED patterns from this panel start to show in the flare. It's still a pretty flare, um, but not as pretty as when it's wide open. Next up, where a lens like this really shines is pulling focus. And this is what I was talking about where the at wide open, the focus is very, very thin. Um, but even so, as you can see, I'm racking focus between the two bottles and the two Baby Yodas very easily and very smoothly. The focus ring on this lens is so nice. Now for some more true to life scenarios. So this is what the lens performs like in a bit of an interview section. Uh, one thing to note here, and I'm not an expert and this isn't a scientific test, but I think there might be a slight green color cast to this lens because I did have to adapt for that in post, even though I had my white balance set correctly in the camera. But once you kind of get everything set up properly and you do adjust that in post, as you can see, the shots that you're able to get out of this lens are very nice. Uh, keep in mind these are my use case your use cases might differ so what do I think of this lens and would I recommend it well if you asked me this question two years ago I would have been all for it I would have been like get it doesn't matter what you're doing these lenses are amazing manual is God I would have told you to go out and get them but now that I'm further along and I'm older and I know more about lenses and cameras and filmmaking, things like that, I have to more lean towards no. Let me explain. The image you can get out of these lenses is incredible and I love what, they're, what they are. They are tanks, they have rich colors, they are amazing in low light situations, but that's kind of it. If you are the kind of person who's on YouTube, for example, like me, you're missing out on a lot of niceties. Like things like autofocus or lens stabilization are super important for when you're walking around with your camera or if you're moving in and out of focus. It's really important to have and with these types of lenses, you just can't have that. Also, one final negative before I forget the whole reason to want this lens is for the fact that it can go down to f.95, but realistically, you can't really go down to f.95. Now, it is hard to get lenses that are under f2 in the micro four thirds world, but you kind of have to stick to that f1.4 to f1.8 range if you want to get super usable footage out of this. But if you are strictly a filmmaker and you have a follow focus, you have a rig, you have a po focus puller, you want something that is going to give that cinematic quality, then this lens and these kit of lenses are pretty great. And honestly, they're almost budget cine lenses too. So you can even mod them. I'll post a link in the description for where you can do that. Um, now, if you're looking to buy this lens, it is a little bit expensive. Um, I bought mine on eBay for 450, but they're usually around the 600 to $800 range. Uh, I would definitely look around and shop around. Just make sure you're getting yourself something that's high quality and try to go for the Mark II. That way you can get that focus clutch. But 
that's gonna go ahead and do it for this video, guys. So thank you once again for watching. As always, if you liked it, make sure to show it by hitting that like button down below. It really helps me out. As well as if you have any questions about what we talked about today, feel free to hit me up on any of my social medias or in the comment section down below. Also, if you're new to the channel and you like the content, feel free to subscribe. But until next time, guys, I will see you all in the next one. Bye.